Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here, and I'm a little bit upset. This is a video that I put out today talking about the Hebrew language, which turns out to be extremely important, but this video is getting a lot of negative feedback. A lot of people making comments talking about mysticism and all kinds of stuff like that when we're talking about the Hebrew language. So I decided to do a little video called What is Mysticism? I went into Google and just did a search because I had the idea that it's somehow spiritual and mystical stuff the same because it seems as though every time we do a video that's talking about making a connection with our father, these people come out and start talking about uh, Kabbalah this and Mystic that and so I, I, I don't... I, I've never really even studied any of this stuff. I just studied the Bible and I believe what it says. So I'm going to come back to this, but let me, let me show you something over here. For a scriptural reference, I want to bring you over here to John chapter 4. Verse 22 says, Ye worship, ye know not what. We know what we worship, for our salvation is of the Jews. And this is a very important verse here. If you know who the Jews are, and I didn't say Jewish people or anything like that. He, he says Jews. He's talking about Hebrews here. Salvation is up to Hebrews. And you best try to learn this or you're going to be caught up in the synagogue of Satan. But anyway, verse 23 says, But the hour cometh and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For our Father seeketh such to worship him. Now, this is the meat of this class is that our father is a spirit. And the reason why I feel like I have to do this is because there's a lot of people who have a problem with this, a problem with anything spiritual. And we're going to jump over to the book of Acts next to see who these people are. But before we do, let's look at verse 24, which says God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. And this is important. It's saying that they must worship him in spirit and in truth. So why, when they hear about anything spiritual, do they seem to get freaked out and start to panic? You know, when our father is a spirit. Well, the answer is real simple. These are modern day Sadducees. These people don't believe in the spirit. They're just like the people in the old time back there arguing with Paul. Acts chapter 23 and verse 8 says, For the Sadducees say that there is no resurrection, neither angel nor spirit, but the Pharisees confess both. And that was the difference between the Pharisees and the Sadducees. The Pharisees believed in the spirit. They believed in angels and they believed in reincarnation. Of course, the Bibles was changed in order to say resurrection, but we'll save that for another class. We're talking about the Sadducees who don't believe in any of this. There, and that there are people around today who don't believe in angels. And so every time we do a class to talk about angels, these modern day Sadducees come out of the woodworks and start calling me names and, and trying to steer people off and and, you know, say bad things that, you know, make people of good faith click off of the videos and even unsubscribe to the channel. And, you know, that's really not fair. You know, there are there is a such thing as angels just because these guys don't believe in them then there is a such thing as the spirit. We just saw a few seconds ago that our father is a spirit. So how are you going to have these people jumping down in the comment section, making all these vile statements, you know, just saying things in order to, like I say, push people away. So I came over here to Google and I just put in the phrase, is spiritual and mystical the same thing? You know, it's, because like I said, they, Anytime we talk about anything spiritual, anytime we talk about angels or anything like that, these people come out of the woodworks. So I put this in. Is, is this what's really going on? And what do you know? Turns out it is the truth. It is the same. Let's, let's come in here and let's, let's, let's read some of this. It says, spiritual phenomena are not then considered to be self-existing, but instead attest to subordinate role by a creator who transcends them. A distinction is then made between the spiritual and the divine and mixed is content themselves with inferring the divine with experiences of the spiritual. So here, here it is, guys. These mystics 
These people who call themselves mystics call themselves that because they think that that's the only thing spiritual. If it's spiritual, then it must be mysticism or something like that. To me, it seems like to push other people away. Like I say all the time, they're like standing at the door using these words uh, like Kabbalah and mystics and esoteric and all of these other words they use in order to push people of good faith away. People who want to know about our father. People who want to make a spiritual connection with them have to go through, have to be willing to fight through all of these Sadducees who say that there is no spirit. And then I come down here and I looked at some of the questions below. Questions people also ask. It says, what is a mystic in spirituality? It says, mysticism is popularly known as any kind of ecstasy or altered state of consciousness, which is given a religious or spiritual meaning, but also may refer to becoming one with God or the absolute. But when you look back over here in John chapter one, our Bibles tell us that we are of God. We're all spirits walking around in the flesh. But when you talk about this stuff, people are going to label you as a mystic. It's because they're modern day Sadducees. So let's go on. Another question says, what does mystical mean in the Bible? It says mysticism is the sense of some form of contact with the divine or transcendent, often understood in Christian tradition as involving union with God. So union with God is mysticism. So we got to stop letting people trick us, guys. We got to stop being tricked. They're using these words in order to trick us, saying that we're mystics or mysticism when we're trying to make contact with our creator. What, what do they think he's there for if we're not supposed to talk to him or communicate with him? It says mysticism played an important role in the history of Christian religion and emerged as a living influence in modern times. So anything spiritual, they're going to label you as a mystic or a mysticism. And like we said, you got to be willing to push, push through. You got to be willing to ignore in order to get what our father wants to offer us. They're, they're standing guard at the door like the dogs that sleep in the crib with the cows, you know, they don't want to eat and they don't want you to eat either. Meaning they don't want to have nothing to do with our father who is a spirit and they don't want you to either. So they push us away. Let's keep going. Let's see what this one says. What does being a mystic mean? A person who claims to attain or believe in the possibility of attaining insight into mysteries, transcending ordinary human knowledge. As by direct communication with the divine or immediate intuition in a state of spiritual ecstasy, a person initiated into religious mysteries. But look over here at the word rapture from the Marion Webster Dictionary. Now, of course, you have this third definition down here, which is often capitalized. We're not really talking about that one, but you look at the first two or the original definitions of the word. It says an expression or manifestation of ecstasy or passion. Then it says a state or experience of being carried away by overwhelming emotion. But then look at this one, a mystical experience in which the spirit is exalted to a knowledge of divine things. So again, they're making these connections with mystical and spiritual. Anything spiritual, they're labeling as mystical. So, guys, I say again, we're, we're going to have to stop letting these people trick us. That's that's all they're trying to do. They're trying to trick us out of the promises. You, you look over here in the third testament of the Bible in uh, chapter 63, which is the teachings for the congregation and all the disciples of Christ. Down here in verse 352, it says, You still lack understanding of many of the revelations destined to be part of your knowledge, but which men have supposed to be proper only to God. Meaning, like, like I said, that class was about the Hebrew language, which he gave to us. And so that video has become the target of the Sadducees basically saying the same thing, that only our father should understand his language, that he should be the only one to understand what the words mean. But anyway, 
It says, when someone has expressed his desire to interpret them or try to penetrate them, he has instantly been branded blasphemous or judged reckless. And I promise you, this is exactly what has happened. This, this video hasn't been up a half a day yet. And we've had two people to unsubscribe. We've had negative comments. I've had to put people in comment jail because they're just, just saying the most vilest stuff trying to push people of good faith away so you know we got to stop letting people trick us guys but that's, that's just it they don't want what our father has to offer and they don't want us to have it either again they're like the dogs who sleep in the crib with the cows they don't want to eat and they don't want us to eat either